to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Conferences like this are feasts of light. The Bible says the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended not. It is more than preaching, it is more than speaking. They are not cunningly devised fables. These are the dispensing of the mysteries of the kingdom, the secrets that turn men into gods upon the earth. So it is important that we are not distracted. That we not only hear, but we see. Habakkuk said, I will stand upon my watch and I will set myself upon the tower so that I will see. When you see, you become. The Bible says, now the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Then it says, but we all, with faces unveiled, beholding as in a mirror, we are changed. Even the cattle of Jacob were changed when they saw. When we see, we cannot remain the same. Hallelujah. John 17 and verse 1. We are on a journey and we trust the Lord to grant us grace. Let's see how far we can go tonight. I will truly lend my voice with that of the great angel of this house to encourage everyone as much as possible to not miss any of the sessions. The sessions build on themselves and it is wise that we sustain the grace to press through. Hallelujah. John chapter 17 and verse 1. Jesus is teaching. Very powerful revelation. These words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy son, that thy son also may glorify thee. I want to teach tonight on a topic I titled Glorify Thy Son. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Tonight we are going to be exploring the mysteries that control the manifestation of the glory of God in the life of the saints. The Bible tells us very clearly that believers are called to a life and a destiny of beauty and glory. It is important that we understand this. There was a cry in heaven, Revelation chapter 5. Worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive. The angels joined the elders and they said to receive glory, blessings, riches, wealth, and so on and so forth. And so the, the saints in light, please understand this. The Bible tells us that we have been called out of every tribe, every tongue, and every nation. The destiny of every believer in Christ is that of beauty and that of glory. It's important that we settle this. That we are called in as much as we are called to represent the purposes of God. The Bible says that the adorning of the priest, speaking of Aaron, must be for beauty and for glory. Hallelujah. John chapter 15 and verse 8. Jesus again was teaching and he said, Herein is my Father glorified. I want to share with you a very powerful mystery. 
hearing this is how my father takes glory that ye bear much fruit remember the prayer of jesus jesus said the hour has come glorify now thy son to the end that thy son would bring glory to you so the technology by which the father is glorified is when the son is glorified first it is in the glory of the son that the father is glorified herein is our father glorified 15 and verse 8 when you bear much fruit so shall ye be my disciples i'll give us one more scripture and then i'll begin to teach galatians chapter 1 and verse 24 it's a scripture that has blessed me for many years and they glorified god in me and they glorified god in me god can be glorified in and through a vehicle called man called the saints that there is a degree of excellence there is a degree of results that a man can command in the earth that will compel men to glorify god a few things you may want to write number one the glory of God, I, I wrote a few things down here. The glory of God refers to the full expression of his beauty, his excellence, his infinite value. That when we talk about the glory of God, we refer to the full expression of his beauty, his excellence, his infinite value. The glory of anything is a measure of the value of that thing. You know, it was an ancient practice that was used for coins and metals to measure wealth. So the Bible says that when Christ is glorified through the church, that means something about our lives will have to explain to creation the infinite worth of God. To manifest or reveal God's glory means to make public the infinite value and the worth of God. To manifest or to reveal the glory of God, it means to make public the infinite value and the worth of God. Causing men to honor, desire and desperately seek Him. Please understand my definition. That to to manifest or reveal God's glory means the public to make public the infinite value and worth of God causing men to honor desire and desperately seek him that means that the glory of God is being manifested through a life through a territory to the degree to which their results compel men to honor, to desire, and to desperately seek God. If nothing about my life becomes compelling enough to make men honor God, to make men seek Him, and to make men desire Him, then I am not revealing the glory of the Father. It's important that we understand what we're dealing with here. That the correct understanding of the worth of God is at the mercy of the saints. That there is something, there is a picture of God that we will need to give creation. The revelation of his glory. Something about our lives, our understanding, our results must compel men, not Christians, men, to come into a point of deep reverence, to come into a point of desire and desperate pursuit for God. In business, we call it marketing. Marketing marketing is the technology by which you make a product desirable is that true and so you can employ all kinds of skills sometimes you have to eat what you want to sell and eat it in a way and manner that makes whoever is watching you to want the same thing are we together now? sometimes you will need to wear what you want to sell the greatest way to market is to be a portrait of what you are promoting that when your life becomes a portrait of what you are promoting, it comes with conviction and power. Is God blessing us already? So when we're talking about the glory of God, it's important that we break it down um, so that our understanding becomes fruitful. The effulgence of the worth, the character, 
the weightiness of God. And then that when that glory is made manifest, it means that we make it compelling. We make it compelling for men to honor God. We make it compelling for men to desire God. We make it compelling for men to seek God. I have seen products that were once desired, but are now no longer desired. Either because they could not subscribe to the changing times. Is that true? Or there was um, laxity in the part of those who were the creators of those products. They did not strive to maintain that passion in the hearts of people. And so companies all around the world continue. They are under pressure. Are we together now? Yes. To invent ways that will continue making products desirable. They can rebrand it. Are we together? They can change the shape. They could add a lot of things. They just employ all those skills. The assignment is to make sure you never lose desire for that product. It is called the revelation of the glory of that product. They find ways to make it relevant. They make children like it. They make adults like it. Look the artistry they go into to make sure they reinvent that product. They can so educate a child and use that child to market the product and all children begin to like it. Then they come to the world of adults and they go through the, the, the labor of studying the psychology of adults and they rebrand that product to reflect their understanding. All of that labor is to communicate the same thing, to force you to desire and to see the necessity of that product. Look up, please. Isn't it amazing that this object will be missing and you will not be at rest again? They have done something to you to make this product look so necessary. Notice what happens to you when your, your credit is about to run out. You become as restless as someone, I mean, watching someone who is sick. You are restless. Why? They marketed something and made you love it so much. You need it. When you wake up from sleep, you reach. They forced it to be more important than many things. Now, I'm not saying it's wrong. I hope you get my idea. I'm just showing how, how much of a good job they did on us. The image and the glory of God is at the mercy of this kind of addiction. We have to create a system of making a generation addicted to everything God. This is what it means to unveil the glory of God. That we institutionalize his consciousness. You become embarrassed if you ever ignore God. That a generation would have brought God to the center of the scene. It has nothing to do with being a Christian or a non-Christian. To make his glory known. Herein is our father glorified when we bear much fruit. We compel creation. He says, glorify now thy son. So please look up. The agenda is not just the glorification of the sons. The agenda is the, of, that the father be glorified. Are we together? We're walking John 17 verse 1. But that the technology is that the father does not have to try to draw glory. He just needs to ensure and insist that the son is glorified. That when the son is glorified, inevitably, the father will be glorified. So the attention of the father now is to make the saints glorious. Glorious enough to match his idea of glory. Now, if you do not understand this, you will approach all of the indices would use later on to measure glory from a carnal standpoint. It is this understanding that sponsors stability when we begin to explore the dimensions of God's glory so that you will now know that every index that is used to measure glory is not just to make the saints glorious for nothing. 
that the glory of the saints is a means to an end. Are we together now? We are like a mirror attempting to show the world the excellency of this kingdom, the excellency of this God that we so love and we so serve. According to God's intelligence, he had come up with a conclusion that if the saints are not glorified, God will not be marketable enough. This is not something he is trying to think about. He knows what he built in man. And he said men are driven by results. There is only so much of patience that explanations can bring to a man. Results are loud enough to do something to man. So the Bible says that if we are interested in seeing the Father glorified, then we must focus on the glory of the saints. Are we ready tonight? Praise the Lord. Your life reveals God's glory to the degree to which it makes men to honor and seek God. If nothing about your life is compelling enough to make men think about God, then it means you're robbing the Father the opportunity to be glorified in and through your life. But please do not forget that the system is glorify the saints. Then the saints will market and promote your goodness to the world. This is how it works. Lavish your glory on the saints. When you get into any home, usually you would use the quality of the life of the wife, the children, is that true? And all who are within the care of that individual. to You use their lives as a report card to gauge his benevolence, to gauge his sense of responsibility. Is that true? That means that if you come into a house, no matter how decent, no matter how civil, the owner of the house is if you do not see that reflecting in his children and the environment then it means that it is not his a description of who he truly is that true so if the saints do not rise in light it will make the world to continue to question the truths about god that they read in scripture for instance i have loved thee with an everlasting love i have drawn you with my loving kindness that is, that is, it has to go beyond a statement to compel people. There must be someone on earth who personifies that reality. There has to be an individual who will make that scripture come alive. Paul calls them living epistles. Are we together? Yes. If it is true that your background does not matter in dealing with God, that God is able to pick a man from a dunghill, it shouldn't remain a memory verse. There has to be someone, a people preferably, on earth who can eventually exemplify that dimension. That people can look at the yesterday version of you and tomorrow's version of you and you remind them of a scripture that God is able to lift. They will never forget that scripture for as long as you are alive. Because every time they see you, you have become a continuation of their Bible study beyond their reading table. Your life now has become a living epistle. Are we blessed? If the Bible says, I will restore the years that the canker worm has eaten, it will remain a profitless scripture until someone is bold enough to show us how God makes this happen. Like Job. Isn't it amazing that every time God wants to help you understand scripture, he will show you the story of a person. He personifies the mysteries of the kingdom, not only in parables, but in men. Job then becomes God's portrait of what restoration looks like. Jacob becomes God's portrait of what encounters look like. Abraham becomes God's portrait of what a blessed life looks like. Are we together now? It was never God's design that it should stop with those characters. Your life should be a continuation of his explanation. 
if in your lifetime you cannot capture a dimension personify a dimension of God you failed in your living Roger are we together I'm trying to be as simple as possible something about your life should give God a theme that every time God wants to remind people of a dimension of him your face can can do justice to that dimension of God. When God wants to show someone that I can lift men from a dunghill, suddenly you appear in their dreams, you appear in their visions. All I want is for you, for you to be glory, for you to be lifted. All I want. Is for you, for you to be glorified. When God wants to demonstrate what favor looks like, then your life becomes the portrait. Your life will be an epistle of wonder, how you defy barriers. How you veto the ill speakings of men. By mysteries that men cannot understand. You become the delight of a generation. Let me tell you, God is depending on us to become extensions of his possibilities. There is a lot that God is that has not been seen. Because the saints have not aligned enough for these new dimensions of God to be revealed. Make no mistakes. Everything we know about God is what someone advocated enough. And where his faith stopped, that was where the revelation of God stopped. But it doesn't mean that's all God can. Is it not because someone, a great man of God, was able to build a church, for instance, and respectfully speaking, within one year, he now used his testimony to show us how far God can go to mean what he says. But what other dimensions are locked up in the spirit, waiting for the alignment of the saints? The Bible says many miracles did Jesus in the presence of his disciples which were not recorded which were not recorded which were not recorded that means all you believe is all you were told how far you believe is how far you saw but there were others that were not recorded and could it be that god seeks those dimensions to find expression I wonder what else Jesus did that was not recorded. I wonder what else Jesus said that was not recorded. I only know that a nation can be born in one day because he said, little children, have you any catch? He said, no. He said, cast your net. He showed us the possibilities that can happen by personifying it. Listen. More than our speakings, our living must begin to speak. Our lives must begin to become compelling testimonies. Let me tell you something I know about men. And I don't claim to know so much. But I know this about men. They will follow you to death when you have results. Except you have results, you will remain a noisemaker. And that for a long time. And when they get tired, they will let you know they've exhausted their patience. Men are obsessed about results. Are we blessed already? Glorify now thy son. Adorn your son with a dimension of your hand and your glory for the sake of your majesty. Make your son become something, a species of reality that is worth studying. That when people sit and look at your life, the strange thing is the more they look at you, they don't remember you, they remember him. So when they keep looking at your life and analyze the possibilities around your life, and wonder by what mysteries they conjure themselves together to walk. They can only end with one conclusion. This is the Lord's doing. And it is marvelous in our sight. Hear me. God does not just want to give you a job. He wants to give it in a way that will make someone wake up in the night and say, Now this is. If you get a job men's way, God is not glorified. He wants to sign on that process. 
when you examine it you will know that something in this equation does not add up for you to be lifted all i want is for you for you to be glorified you to be lifted You look at the story of this great ministry. You look at the progressions of the dealings of God. And you look at where God has brought this ministry. If you are honest and truthful, it should bring you to one conclusion. This is the Lord's doing. Hallelujah. You hear the story of so many people. And then you look at the background. Sometimes when they take you to the villages and the places they grew from, it was not Nathaniel's fault when he said, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Don't, don't be harsh on the man. There was a track record. He was not speaking out of nothing. Could it be that something God will do in your life in this conference will turn you into a wonder that people know that the last week's version of you the last week's version of you, that Kabarus Kalabarus Edekeniata. The last time I checked, you were not serious with God. You were jobless. I know that you were just loitering around the streets of Abuja. What happened between last week and Riha is a miraculous you, a dimension of you that now dumbfounds principalities and powers. Listen. Please understand this. God does not just want us to live. He wants us to live in a way that our lives compel discussions. Not just like talking about politicians. It's impossible to watch certain men and keep quiet. Are we blessed? When our lives become too ordinary, we rob God the opportunity to be glorified. When our lives become too predictable, too scientific, too sociological, there must be a dimension of our life that only, that will ask questions only God can answer. Am I blessing you tonight? The saints, I wrote something down here. The saints have been equipped and continue to be equipped with the tools that will help them manifest the glory of God. Please understand this. That God is so passionate about revealing his glory in the saints and then deriving glory out of that that he went out of his way to supply all of the spiritual equippings. This is where my teaching starts tonight. We're well, going to be very brief. And then we'll pray. But it's not just enough to know that God intends for the saints to be glorified. It's not just enough to know that in the glory of the saints is the glory of the Father. Are we together? It's also important for us to know that God went so far to supply all of the equipments that will make for the saints to rise regardless of the backgrounds. You have to understand this. The key word is regardless. Regardless. Apostle, you don't know where I came from. Regardless. Apostle, you don't know what disadvantages around my life. Regardless. In fact, the deeper, the deeper the obstacles, the more the glory is revealed. When the journey of your life is too simple, you don't have much to say. The world will not even need you. Don't you know that there are certain, listen, there are certain stages in life that there is a requisite level of pain and tragedy that qualifies you to stand there. If your life is too innocent and does not carry the signature of the depth of God's power and love, do you not know that what you are going through now that you call a disadvantage is how favor works? Listen, Listen, please understand this. God is opening our eyes. He tells Mary, sir. He says, thou art highly favored. And the next thing that happens to Mary is a very serious scandal of a woman having her stomach protrude. And then 
She now says that she's pregnant for a ghost. How silly can that sound? You should be repentant already. And now you are telling the people, I mean, a ghost. And yet God calls it favor. What else would have made you remember Mary? Do you not know that when God said, I will favor you, the three years of joblessness is a track record that will make you not necessarily for what you are saying, but for what you went through. Listen, a time will come you will go to a place where only you has your own testimony. That becomes your edge. Pain is favor. Your limitations can be God walking something. He is branding a testimony. If there are too many people, the law of value tells us that when you are easily replaceable, then you are not worth much. So God will, will allow a construction, a pathway that when men see, they say, you follow this? You say, yes, sir. And then they will place a demand on that God that led you through that kind of wilderness. This is why they feared the nation of Israel. When they saw the cities they conquered, and they saw the conditions that they survived by, their enemies with their, with their, their entire, the battalion, the, the, the strength would fail them. Who is this mysterious God that fights for these weak people? We have studied them over time. When they say they are coming to you, run away. When her man came to his wife, and said, can you imagine the embarrassment? She asked him one question. She said, tell me again, where is Mordecai from? He said, he's a Jew. He said, you are finished. This story is not even over. There is a story with those people that when God begins to fight for them, and if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what is Help me, Roger. And if our God is for us, then what can stand again? Imagine how demotivating it will sound. I grew up, met God. Two days later, I became a man of God. Come to my church. For what? What is the wow factor in your track record? What is compelling? Where is God in that equation? It's too basic. It's too human. Is God speaking to someone? But then you say, once upon a time, I was in the valley of the shadow of death. I didn't even know that I will survive. In that place, so when you say God is a lifter, they want to doubt, but your life stops their unbelief. Immediately they want to doubt, the Holy Spirit reminds them, look at the man talking. Is he not a personification of that reality? Listen, let, I, I don't know how I got into this painting now. I'm, I'm, I'm not supposed to get there at all. Listen, in, in Luke chapter 1, from verse 1, let me show you something. When we become reflectors of God's glory, we compel people to believe that dimension of God more than any other thing. There are things that the Bible calls the things that are most surely believed. Please give us Luke chapter 1 and verse 1. For as much as many have taken in hand to set forth in order a declaration of those things which most surely believed among us. There are things that should be most surely believed in logic. There are ministries when you get there, prosperity is most surely believed. Because the testimony and the track record that birth revelation is too real for you to doubt it. There are ministries when you go there, excellence is most surely believed because they're of the life and the power of God. Are we together? It is true that we believe, but not everything is believed at the same degree. As I've gone through in my experience with God and in life, 
that have planted a greater conviction about God than other areas. You have to understand how God works. Do not be afraid when God begins to pass you through the seasons that makes you become a personification of a dimension of his glory. The furnace of affliction, the cave of Adulam, is all, but it is fatal. Please hear me. Let me speak to someone. Not that God will give you a job, but if he had given it to you two years ago, you and all those around you, there is a dimension of come out. He's not interested in the job. He's interested in a message that that story will bring out. He's interested in that, that message like, like a, a, a painter using a canvas. There is something he wants to draw about himself through your life. I don't have a lot of regard for people who don't have a track record of a dimension. I love them sincerely. But when I see people through the valley of the shadow of death, their worship is different. There are times they stand and they keep quiet and yet they are singing the loudest in that place because their hearts have a voice. Father, glorify thy son. Glorify now thy son. Do something. Lead me through an experience that will bring me to a point where my life becomes a testimony. That my life would not become so ordinary as to make men forget you when they look at me. That if they ever forget you when they look at me, I become a reminder to them. So someone leaves his house doubting God. I've been in this abuja. I don't know if God can lift. I don't know if God can bless. I've been serving God for years. No reward. And then a voice does not need to speak. It is coming in a man's experience. Suddenly you are passing them and the Holy Spirit now says, Now you know this woman. Look at her five years ago. And now rethink what you said. Is it profitable to serve in the house of God? If the only way you preach is by opening a Bible, you are not preaching well. Your preaching should continue whether the Bible is opened or not. Because the book should never be closed. You are also a book. When this is closed, this should remain open. You stand before the world and they look at your life. What did you say? God does not favor people? Look at my life. What did you say? God does not lift. Look at my life. What did you say? God is too slow. The persuasion that comes from your personal experience. The Bible is a revelation of what God can do. But it's not a revelation of all he can do. It's a revelation of what men captured. The Bible does not hide it that some things were not recorded. But that these were recorded sufficient enough to help us believe. In people of God, there is so much more that God can do in and through our lives. But it is important for us to understand how he does it. When God tells you he is going to favor you, cry for grace. Don't just start joking. Because his system of bringing favor is only beautiful in the end. You don't like what I'm saying? I'm so sorry. I wish I... But what I'm saying is as true as the name of... That when God decides to lift you, He says, if God be for us, there has to be someone who will act that scripture. So sin one will be everybody being against you. Come on now, if you are directing a movie and you are going, if the name of your movie is that scripture, how will you act it? Remember, you wanted to sell. Scene one will be darkness. So is, is God a good actor by giving us description verses? God creates the heavens and the earth. Then he now says the earth was dark and void. For many years I said, God, couldn't you just jump me? Just go straight to the Holy Spirit. How then would you appreciate him? 
it took that darkness to the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Look how God details darkness as if he is afraid of it. The bones very dry. Go straight to the point and say, there was an army. I spoke and an army. Why give the details of the darkness? So that you will see the excellency of the glory. So every time things are getting dark, the ones who know God know that that is only a play. Your goodness is real, I testify. Your goodness is real. Your favor is real, I testify. Your mercies are real, I testify. Your lifting is real, I testify. Say like Apostle Peter, the things we have seen, the things we have heard, and that which our hands have handled of the word of life, your gospel no longer becomes a cunningly devised fable. You are speaking from a standpoint of conviction. Take your eyes away from the supposedly crushing company. The jealousy of God is too much to allow you to be that embarrassed. If you know something about the love of God, you will find rest even in darkness. Because he's, he's orchestrating something. You commanded light to shine, not into, out of. Out of. Out of darkness. Mary, do not be embarrassed. You don't even know the name of what is happening to you. Pregnant for a ghost. Not sure of what will happen with Joseph. And God says, that is why you are highly in Jesus is speaking. And he said, the hour has come. Glorify thy son. And the next thing, cross. Is that how you glorify the son? I hope you are ready for this conference. You glorify the son by coronating him. You glorify the son by saying, hear ye him. I have glorified him, he said in John 12. And I will yet glorify him. There is a kind of glory that comes by smiling. But there is a kind of glory that comes when you cry. It's all glory. Believers, hear me. I show you the glory that excels. Jesus is hanging on that cross and everyone is feeling sorry for him. Jesus, where did you keep your power? Where did you keep the miracles? And Jesus says, I'm being glorified. The technology is that if I be lifted up, from the earth is that how to lift a man up the last time we saw mordecai being glorified he was on a chariot jesus what are you doing naked on a tree being glorified on a tree yes sir yeah. i'll be starting this conference ministering to someone tonight change your interpretation of the things around you lord why does it get darker when i am praying the more i fast it's getting darker the more I pray, the carnal mind cannot understand spiritual things. And if you allow men to be the interpreters, it takes the spirit to interpret mene, mene, tekel, ufesen. Don't let men interpret the handwriting on your wall from sociology. They will call light darkness. So there are times that the way to go up is to go down. Going down. You should not cry. You should rejoice. The way to be a savior in Egypt sometimes can be to run from Egypt. The way to be a prime minister is to be a prisoner. The ways of God are not our ways. Believers, hear me. 
because many of us are stopping something already that is almost finished you are casting and praying and binding whereas heaven is saying cheer up you are almost there you do not even know what god has in store is it not in your bible that no eye has seen no ear has heard neither has it entered into the heart of any man apostle is four years and i have only five members the story it is that story that makes the anointing that would come upon your life valuable that the next time you tell people there is a grace for increase there is a here about you your story becomes an attestation that such a grace exists the challenge with this, and this is my message by the spirit tonight we're going to pray that the challenge many times if we have not sustained the eyes of the spirit to see things from the lens of heaven so that which should be noble that which we should stand and rejoice we cry why because we're dealing with the world of men and men cannot see things as they can only see the end of things apostle i'm praying god has called me to be a prophet every prophecy i gave was a lie you are john no i'm james you have two sisters i were many we are 20. what sort of a prophet is this you and yet god told you before that experience starts beware and respect what follows when god speaks whether you understand it or not the moment god speaks whatever follows print it from the lens of what he said if god says i am giving you speed and delays there is an actor acting something there believe me i'm not just motivating you what i'm saying is powerful it is based on this intelligence that you people laugh through storms and while they laugh listen to me when john the beloved stood with jesus and jesus was on the tree he looked at him and said john don't weep for me you are beating me this is only for 72 hours and a coronation is about to happen you need to think about yourself take care of your mom take care of this this is what the saints saw that even in the midst of fire they rejoice there are people that god is equipping with intelligence to go back and say lord thank you for us we are all ceos but my pain becomes an edge this is why they will invite me tomorrow they say there are platforms that they will not ask who read this far they say who has gone through this this far whose company has lost money so much no you have not lost enough for you to speak to kings apostle it's been five years my wife has not put to bed i know it's not the best but god told us that kings will come out of us then write it down there is a story you are only watching the formation of a story that comes will not be a child you will be a nation there are children who are like nations in one child is that true now let me find somewhere to round up beware of men too much to kill the process of your becoming glorious there are times that people will look at you and say no 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 you shouldn't be this broke i think i have to help you and god says stop i am too responsible to leave them that way there is something i am betting manage your compassions so that you do not close the seasons of people that man that you are pitying is a kingdom financier but that experience is what will plant in him compassion for the lost there is a foundation coming out of that pain don't close it peter's compassion wanted to destroy salvation no you will not go to the cross and jesus says satan get thee behind me why would you say get thee behind me to compassion you will be learning that the anointing that comes upon your life does not just depend on your capacity but your scars that your scars are treasures in the spirit let no man try bear in my body 
Don't be ashamed of your scars. Many of you right now, your scar is not something. Listen, what is an object of shame tomorrow will be your testimony. You know Jesus in heaven, not just by the crown on his head. Who else has the scar in his hand? Of 10 families, no one has risen. Don't worry. God is birthing a savior out of that testimony. Out of that testimony. Admire your experience. Don't wish to be someone else. Don't rush seas. Take it with honor. Soak the gary with honor. Don't, don't, don't try to fake what can be real. God is taking you somewhere. Please hear me. You are a man of God. Be patient. Walk with God. When he's done, he will sign upon your life. And the nations will stand in awe. They will see the dimension of God's grace and glory. Believe me, I know what I am saying. Believe me, I know what I am saying. If anyone tells you God does not lift, he lied. If anyone tells you God is too slow, he lied. If anyone tells you God cannot bless, he lied. But are you willing to go through the process that brings genuine glory, not borrowed glory, not a vapor type glory that is up to date, a lot of balloon success that we have that does not sustain the foundation at last. Roger, the Lord sent me here to speak to you that the betting of glory goes through a process. One of my ladies sent me a text. I didn't even know she was due. She sent me a text from yesterday night and reminded me again that this baby has refused to come out and she's tired of waiting. I think she's been in the hospital. And I said, here's my message. Look the attention of the doctors because there is a baby coming. Never been a woman, I will never be one. But then, I can tell you this. I've had the opportunity to see what happens to women moments before they give it. She can look at her husband and say, I hate you. Don't you dare come to my life again. Oh, forget what she's saying. Look at what she's saying. I'm carrying a destiny. And even though I'm human, I want to keep moving. Many of you right now are like mothers. There are visions, there are dreams, there are prophetic things you are about to bear. And that's why you are shouting all those prayers. That's why God does not, God, kill me after two days. And God says, I know what you are saying. You are human. I've been there before. I know that when the death of anything valuable is painful, God, I don't love you. I will not be a Christian again. And God says, I know. Your heart is just saying, show me mercy. I'm almost there. So he ignores the voice that comes from your speaking and focuses on your heart and supplies grace. Please hear me, believers. I bring you a message from heaven. The process that gets glory is non-negotiable. It's not something you can pray away. It's not something you can pray against. It is not demonic. Even if it is, the wisdom of God can walk away around it. But please hear me. Forget about glory if the cross cares you. Because the only door to the throne, not one of the doors, the only door to the throne is the cross. It is the reason why when people have certain kinds of track records, please listen, they get to a point where the Bible says he suffered no man to do them wrong. He reproved even kings for their sake. You know why? Because their track record is blood dripping on the altar. They've gone through too much. Joseph never had the dream of a pit. Joseph never had a dream of Potiphar's house. Joseph never had the dream of the prison. 
He had the dream where he saw the sun, the moon, and 11 stars, just like you. God never showed you the dream of a landlord chasing you out. God never showed you the dream of your prayer not working. God never showed you the dream of your not being invited for a job or whatever. All he showed you was a day when the nations will stand in awe and say, we want your God. That's what you saw when you slept. That's what you saw when you woke up. That is still what he's saying. Even when you are in the pit. He will never change what he's saying. Let me tell you this. Every time you don't understand what is happening in your life, is proof you are not the one running it. It tells you that there is one who is lifting you. So you trust his wisdom. Many times our unbelief will always make us to want to know the details. And in working with God, the mission is follow me. He does not necessarily owe you every explanation. Just follow me. Abraham, take thy son. Let me show you how Abraham became the father of nations. It was not an impartation. Take thy son, thy only son, whom thou lovest. I believe in impartations, but let me tell you, our generation is about to get into a, a big mistake. Not everything can be imparted. A track record cannot be imparted. The value of certain graces is when they meet you at the end of your season. And so God says, I'm calling you into a prophetic ministry. But for one year, you are going to be praying like a madman. God, how will I eat? That's the point. There is something I want to teach you about my supplies. And if I say, go and read it, you will not believe it. So I have to use you to act it. So that you will never forget it. When I say I can supply your needs, you don't just depend on what you read. You also depend on your story. Listen, there are things I've gone through in my life that have sponsored compassion even when I minister to the sick. Sometimes when I look at the situation of people, humanly speaking, we're humans. You look at that situation and you're like, oh, interesting. But then he reminds you, may your life be full of archives that God can draw from. There should always be something in your experience that can kill unbelief. You're about to start a project and they tell you it's two billion, three billion. And you sit down and you almost laugh at yourself. You stand in front of the mirror and say, ah, what? You know, I've never known I can be this foolish to myself. Then you remember. There is a level of innocence that is not healthy. You should allow God pass you through seasons. Seasons. When you lead certain songs, they will now make sense. You know, it's amazing how that as God increases you in life, you go back to the songs you hate because they now make sense. On Christ the solid rock I sent all on the ground sink I used to be in the seminary and I hated repetition. I didn't know why they always say repeat stanza. They said we finished it. They say repeat it. And you see the people singing, say repeat it. Oh. Repeat it. We used to gather as a family to pray. And many times, when my parents are praying, they will give thanks for over 10 minutes. God, we thank you for this. You know, and I just round up. Lord, we thank you generally. I mean, he understands. There are things only growth can correct. Don't attack people too early. Pastor, why do you roll all the time? You don't need to explain. Time. Is a lecturer. Time has an interesting way of mentoring people in bringing to their consciousness why certain things happen the way they happen. But then in the end of all of those things, you will find out that your life becomes a reflection of God's glory. My one desire is that you will be praised. That you will be praised. That you be praised, 
my one desire that you be praised that you be praised listen there are times that you will never have anything to say if you have not gone through certain things when people are talking your innocence is not invited you will need a testimony what has God done what is touching enough to warrant your contribution there are conversations that you will need to pass through certain things to be able to contribute so when someone is saying I know what it means to be hungry he said you remind me I also know what it means to be in school without school fees now you can relate and together you can say great is thy faithfulness and you both understand what you are saying there are people who are completely disconnected from the reality of men so they cannot praise God because everything you say they have nothing in their lives to relate with praise God when he gives you an opportunity to taste of the things that limit men so that when men are praising God you see the excellency of that glory that comes out from you when they see you as an earthen vessel no one helped you how did you get your PhD and you tell them it's a long story they say we're willing can we organize ourselves just to hear you and you say am I that valuable your pain made it so that was glory in birth and they would pay you and say tell us mentor us how does God lift a man with no support and you say are you willing I can't speak well they say but your pain um, we don't have that testimony we will make do with whatever limitation go on something you are going through today will make people ignore every other thing that is not working and focus on that which is glorious in your life believe me when I tell you this there are music artists that it is the frustration and the pain that will lead to the music ministry one day you will stop listening to songs and you will sit down like Jonah whilst you are sitting a song will come that you did not write you will now believe when they say songs can be received until now you think it's a lie because there is the, the pain factor that makes that reality believable is not yet in your life Roger, God is counting on you, counting on your life, counting on your testimony to reveal to the nations that Christ can be glorified and he can be glorified through the saints. Let nothing you are going through today embarrass you. Don't rush seasons. Go through it with honor. While you cry, pass through it. While you are praying, you are done praying. And the people that you live around say, Pastor, you are done praying, but you are still hungry. And you tell them, be my witnesses now. So that when he honors me, he will be my validators also. Listen to me. There is a joy that is set before you. So you must obtain grace to despise the shame seeing then that we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses the bible says let us lay aside every weight every weight and the sin that doth easily beset us and then run with perseverance the race that is set before us here it is looking up to jesus the author and the finisher of our faith who for the joy that was set before him what did he do endured the pain endured. have you heard this statement he has paid his price she has paid her price that statement is very powerful very powerful when you pay the price of anything you are allowed to pick it correct no matter what you like if I love this this is beautiful glorious very excellent the question is that there is a price tag on it if I have some of the money and not all I can deposit but may not be allowed to pick it until the price is paid in full even jesus was not spared till he paid the price your destiny has a price tag your prayer point has a price tag your process is god answering that prayer 
Are you willing to endure and let him continue? This is how the anointing comes. This is how grace comes. As I preach, I'm tempted to just pause and just think about my own life. You know, today many people see all the great things that God is doing respectfully and I thank God for it. But the only thing I can tell you, dear people of God, is that behind every glory, there truly is a story. And sometimes God helps us so much that it never looks like we went through fire. You see, there's a therapeutic effect that the throne has on you. It can erode everything that looks like yesterday. But make no mistakes, Joseph was once in the pit. Make no mistakes, Daniel was once a slave. Make no mistakes, Ruth was once a woman who was wondering what to do with her life. Make no mistakes, the Son of God was once on the cross. This will both enlighten you so that when you see people going through seasons that you cannot explain, you can wrap your hands around them like Simon of Cyrene. You will help them while they are on their way, breathing their glory. Do not expect me to remind to remember you when I'm on the throne. If you saw me carrying the cross and you didn't come to help me. The palace already has servants. It is a cross that does not have helpers. So if you want to be featured in my tomorrow, do something in my today. This is already wisdom for someone. That you say, Lord, who are you lifting now? Let me quickly help to carry that cross. It is powerful to be by people at their moments where they are trusting for lifting. Reha, hear me. God is counting on us. Please stand on your feet. We are going to pray. But God is counting on us that the glory that we have been redeemed to reveal may not come the way many of us and we say it to come. But it is that glorious. For some of you, it is your glory that is bringing the tears in your eyes now. Cry with honor. Do not hide the scars. They will be your testament of endurance. Hold hands with someone. I will do anything just to see you, to behold you as my for your glory. I will do anything just to see you, to behold. Wanna be, wanna be where, where you are. Wanna, wanna be, be where you are. Hallelujah. Two prayer points, and I'm out of your face tonight. Number one, Father, let my life personify a dimension of your reality. Let my journey on earth become a message revealing to people the potentials, the power, the grace. The manifestation of your glory in my life should compel men to need you, should compel men to serve you, should compel men to love you. Let me personify a dimension of your glory that you seek to be revealed in the earth. Is someone praying? Hallelujah. Last prayer point for tonight. If you turn aside in the day of battle, the Bible says your strength is small. When the woman of God came here, she told us to pray for strength by faith, he says.
Sarah herself received strength. You are going to pray for strength. Some of you, your season is two days left. One week left. One month left. You cannot afford to fail. You've endured five years. You've endured ten years. You cannot abort destiny because of lack of endurance. Some of you are crying, but let me tell you sincerely. I stand by the God of heaven. That there is always victory. There is always the enthronement of they who finish even to the end. Lift your voice and obtain strength strength to go through the mockery strength to go through the misunderstanding strength to go through the pain strength to go through the embarrassment strength to go through the current business failure things may not be working in my life as the Bible declared it should. For some of you, your season is wrapping up even at this conference. Because before it ends, like Jacob, having wrestled with God and received a new name, the Bible says, and the sun arose and he called the place Peniel. Draw strength, draw strength, draw strength, draw strength, draw strength. The anointing of the Spirit is touching this woman. Please help her. My time is up, but I'm just, I just saw what looked like oil on this woman's head. We may not have time to minister. Time is gone. We have to respect it. But listen to me, people of God, listen to me. This is how greatness is formed in this kingdom. It is first the cave of Adullam. It is first the cross. It is first the season of sowing with tears. With tears. It is not every sowing that is pleasant. That's what makes the seed precious. That the tears come out. You are sowing in the spirit now. No one may be seeing you. The music ministry is there in its formation. You cry, you write songs, you edit. You are writing the sermons. And you keep seeing visions of the nations. And yet you have not gotten out of your locality. Obtain grace to stay. Sustain the grace to stay. All the days of my appointed time. I will wait. There is a time appointed. And then when that shofar blows, there is also something called the season of appearing. It says, John remained in the wilderness until it is dangerous to open up doors that God did not open. Your will can open a door, but all you will see is pain. Till the day your pain coincides with divine timing, then you will call it breakthrough. I bring you a word from the Lord to strengthen your understanding that there is a relationship between death and glory. And for many of us who are going through seasons right now that people cannot explain, that not even you understand, please hear me. It is not because you are not a Christian. It is because you are a Christian. Hear me. Be careful. Do not blush. Why don't I have a job? There is a making. Father, grant us strength even by the Spirit. We have come to draw. We have come to drink. And you have opened our understanding tonight to see the excellency of the uncomfortable process that leads to glory. Lord, we decree and declare that we desire glorify thy son. Grant us capacity to go through all of the seasons that we would need to pass through. Grant us grace 
birth in us, O God, the kind of glory that will confound principalities and powers. Let scripture not only be fulfilled in our lives, may we become living epistles. We decree and declare that we will give you the glory and we will cause the nations to see you, to desire you, to need you, to love you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Alaska de Bashka Nakata Branda Katekos Kate Branda Katapa Kotosko to break a take and the The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.